Um, so this is where I'm at with the website. Um, it's based upon a lot of work, prior work earlier about kind of some of the priorities of our traffic. Um, the goal is really, whereas like a commercial product, we're trying to drive people, funnel people to buy something. Ultimately, what we want to do is funnel people not only to use it, but thereafter to become contributors in some fashion, whether from as easy as like sharing information about the project to, you know, actually committing code to participating on some level. But like, because what we're what we're selling here is not a product. Yeah, we're not selling a product. We're selling. A we're meal. selling a good a good mission, right? In the good mission. So we're trying to like emphasize more of that like positive mission about Inkscape. It's not a business. It's a community effort to help, where people are helping other people. So that's kind of the underlying basis. Um, you granted this is this is a work in progress. So in theory, um, it's just a static mockup. Um, this top banner would showcase some kind of really cool art from the community. And it can range from, you know, this is an illustration from like, I guess, Ninja Turtles to like, it could even be a good photograph of like somebody doing some three D fabricated thing, or you know, but it's curated and really cool. It's meant to like hook you in and like make you interested. Um, really simple menu, um, really about, learn, contribute. That may play around. A really clear, um, persistent download button across the site. So at least the front end, the more promotional side of the site. Um, the main reason people show up on the site is to download. Um, it's by and large what people do. And so we want to make that really easy to find, download the latest version, plus, you know, this is a combined button, or you can read like the release notes. Every time you visit the site, this will kind of randomly pull up something new. Um, playing with how we deal with news, right now I'm playing with like, you know, maybe the news is like this little like announcement thing that pops up on the top. Like it's really prominent right now, but when we looked, really low percentage of people visit any news. And considering it's the only thing we promote through social media and everything, maybe suggest it should be there, but not like the- I mean, the news, news is also a um, contributory side piece, not a brochure side piece, so I think we're good to exclude it. Okay. I mean, if you need something to be there to, to show activity, you can probably do that through artwork and through photography. Yeah. That's true, Single but we may want like, so there are like a fundraisers that we run and like things that come up. We want some way to like have like a notice when you get to the site, hey, yes, that, yeah. you know, help fund the next uh, hack fest or hey, we're organizing an event in Brazil, you know, tell your friends or whatever, right? Yes, and so having a feed from the new stuff makes sense there. Okay, so kind of rolling down, um, We've identified, you know, five kind of groups of people that encompass about 90, I don't know, this isn't scientific, a very, very large share of what we do. Um, and those would be artists and illustrators, and this is by, by large the biggest group. People are just making their own cool artwork. And that's kind of a broad definition. Um, graphic designers, interaction designers, educators. Uh, I'm still not set on this title, but presenters would be we're trying to, there are a lot of like scientists, you know, academics otherwise, academics. business people that are really using Inkscape to like do graphs and infographics and just like stuff. And I don't know what to call that yet, but like th th their needs are kind of around a specific area. And so the idea of this is like a big slider where you can click into these or it may be animated where we highlight like what Inkscape has to provide you. So in this case, as an artist, it's highlighting artwork that scales to any size, work imports into many applications, software runs on nearly any computer, and all features are always free. And then you can learn more and that will take you to a page that expands on those features that are relevant to you. So we're not, so if you're, oh, who's not on here? Makers, I need to fit one more. Work in progress. Work in progress, right? Um, so like in, in the instance of makers, they're using like laser cutters and stuff for Inkscape. They're not as concerned about. So is that, is that the end of the page or is there some more? No, there's more. Okay. Um, 
so really the intent is early on we want people to understand Inkscape empowers anyone to draw freely, including these people. So if you don't fit into this one of these buckets, right. Right. Okay, so next, um, the that's idea where is the videos go. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm playing with. So learn how Inkscape powers creativity. So creators around the world are using and making Inkscape. These are just a few of their stories. So the idea is that we'll create some kind of benchmark videos where we're highlighting people that are not just using it, but programming it, that it's just kind of this community, collaborative effort, people helping people. Um, and we do that in video format, short videos. We do a couple, three, four, I don't know, um, to kind of set, the, set a standard. And then the intent is that we then turn it over to the community, say, tell us your Inkscape story. And, and I'm playing with the idea of this being my Inkscape story is like the theme. You know, I'm so and so, and this is, this is my Inkscape story. It's kind of like the, the recursive theme, so people can talk about how they're using Inkscape, record their own video, uh, submit it, and we can have a library of all these videos. And curate. Um, and, and curate them, right? But like, but right. really, like, get the idea out there that there are all kinds of ways that people are using it. People are also making it, and sometimes doing both. And then the parts that haven't been developed, the next part there is really become a part of the community, you know, and it's insight. Inkscape is a non-profit project run by people like you. Join us in the cause of creative freedom. And it's really intended to like drive, like this is how you can get involved. You can share it with other people. You can go and participate on a forum. You can build tutorials. You can join one of the communities that are building Build a Hackfest. Build a Hackfest, or if none of those suit you, you can donate a few bucks here, right? Like, um, so it's, that, that's the idea. That's really where we kind of want to end it. And then below that will probably be, um, here's some other projects that you might be interested in kind of thing. That's good. So, sorry, I'm talking to you all. Very nice. Any feedback? Well, hopefully we'll get feedback from everybody watching. To what? From the, from the people watching. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now it gets shaky. So, um, so in addition to working on the new website, um, we've got some good progress this week on the old website. Uh, people may notice that uh, we got resource updates from OSU. Do you want to talk about that? Um, so for, the, for a long time, we've been trying to tune the, web, the, the, the website so that it can uh, respond faster, um, implementing better caching and faster websites and, and database pooling. And, but we, we were just not getting the kind of performance that we needed for the traffic that we were having on the, on, on the site. Um, so what we've done is we, we've gone back to OSU OSL that provide uh, Inkscape's machine that where the website is hosted, and we asked them to double both the memory and the CPU. And uh, so far, so good. The website is responding much better. Uh, but that goes along with all of the improvements that we've made to caching and so on. And so then in addition to the website, we're, uh, we had a, a meeting yesterday on Mailman. So we'll be able to finally get off of SourceForge. Uh, we have a new hosting provider for that. And um, we'll be upgrading to Mailman 3. So hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll be able to get that rolled out. Um, then another, th another thing we talked about was uh, today was uh, directory structure. Tav sent out an email summarizing some of the discussion from the other day and we got a lot of good feedback and so we had another discussion today talking about that uh, and are you going to post another update on the plan? Well, it's on the web, so people can, can have a look at it. But yeah, it's, it's been updated. Okay, so that'll be rolling out maybe within the next couple of weeks? Yeah, probably, probably in a couple of weeks. Give people chances to land the work they're working on now. Give them a warning. And... So if you have any opinions on it, get them in soon. Um, okay, we also went through uh, our list of projects. We have a num uh, we're trying to build a comprehensive list of different ideas of development projects that could be for 
anybody that, that's looking for something to do, summer code or uh, other projects. And so we went through a lot of those and identified prioritization of some things are kind of more refactoring code improvement that can be maybe done later and other things are maybe near term things that affect users uh, that might be nice to have. We also have to take into account things that are near term that should be done before we reach 1.0 and things that are maybe more dis destabilizing that should be left till after 1.0 or more time consuming. Uh, and so in addition to a lot of these discussions, Alex has been hammering on the actions code and got rid of GTK widget. Yeah, the or SP widget. SP widget. Yeah. So the toolbar migration is important because we make use of a whole load of these deprecated GTK action widgets. And so the process that I'm going through at the moment is trying to get rid of all of that usage. That means that we'll be able to do a clean build. And from that point, we'll then be able to start implementing the new G action uh, API. And so this means that uh, we'll be able to start hooking up application scoped actions, which are completely. So if we want to do things where we spin up a new user interface, say a simplified one for kids, or something that is more adapted to a particular user, it'll be much easier to do that. So we're really excited about that. Um, we, have, we have to balance between stuff that we can do right now that will be um, non-disruptive for 0.93, and that'll get us over the hump for the GTK3 migration and what we'll need to leave for later on um, post 0.93, maybe post 1.0. Um, we also talked about extensions, refactoring, and testing. And so yep. Mark's been hacking on that quite a bit. Yep, so uh, with the extensions, what we've done is we've uh, put all the ex extensions into a new repository. And the new repository is basically going to be extensions to, to 2.0 because the amount of refactoring that's gone in has been uh, quite, quite significant. Um, trying to se se separate out our namespaces and clean everything up, rem removing duplication, and getting rid of all the Python 2.0 um, incompatible code and replacing it with functional equivalents that work in both, and uh, making sure that things are, have doc strings, that they are properly appropriate and running things through PyLint and things like that. So we, there's, there's a lot, a lot of clean cleanup that needs to happen, but we also need to write a lot more tests uh, because we had tests that would run over the extension, each of the ex extensions, and basically just call it with a blank SVG. Um, and therefore, you get a sense that you, like nothing would catastrophically break, but you, you're not actually testing the functionality. And so we need to expand that so that we're actually testing more of the code. And so we'll, we'll be working on co co coverage reports uh, to make sure, but we also need to get back to some of the, the original authors so that they can explain uh, what it is that some of their code does, um, because a lot of it is very opaque and has no documentation. So if you're an extension writer, now's your time to get involved. Um, we also had a really good conversation this afternoon on um, a multi-page. Uh, the four of us really, or five of us really, um, went through a lot of ideas. Which of us should talk about that? You want to? Um, yeah, so we started off with the idea that uh, we could implement multiple pa pages using layers. Um, we had a brief spec about like how that would work, but it actually we actually found that that didn't work very well at all. So we, we've scrapped that. There's a, a couple of bits of fun functionality from that that we'll probably keep as extensions to layers, but not necessarily as for pagination. And now we're specking out a user interface for essentially drawing layers onto the cam, uh, sorry, not layers, drawing pages onto the cam, cam, canvas so that you can have multiple pages and then separate those out uh, when it comes time to doing exports into PDF and PNG and various other things, uh, so that we can uh, not only give the user the impression that they've got multiple pages to work with, but also that they actually can produce a multiple page uh, PDF output. Yeah, and so and we're, we're noticing that the, the idea of organizing your drawings as, you know, or subdividing them into layers for like pages um, is appearing in other places too. So we've, we've 
touched on um, print capabilities and some of the stuff that people are discussing about print could also hook in with a lot of these ideas, animation, presentations, and, and so forth. So we have, there's a lot of ideas flowing around, you know, how we can take advantage of this and how we can lay out the UI so that everything kind of makes sense. Because we're not really a, we're not a book authoring tool. So we have kind of a different take on, on how that should work. So that's, this has been really good to get a lot of different perspectives on the idea of multi-page, both from users and developers and, and so forth. Um, and we also talked a little bit this morning about animation and the different types of animation that people would want to do. And not so much about like what we, plans for what we want to do ourselves, but if other people are interested in working on animation, whether it be web animation or, you know, like generating a MPG file of pages or something more sophisticated to understand how we can fit that into Inkscape and, and how, what types of work you would need to do and projects you need to do to implement some of the interpolation and other things that animation would need. Um, we also finally finalized the budget for last year. We had a, the board had a vote uh, last few weeks. And so I finally got that done. We have lots of money, which is great. Thank you all the donors. Uh, we still need to have some discussion, I guess, about fundraising and, and funding. Um, and we also have had a lot of discussions on how we can more effectively use the money, um, not just on Hackfest, but also on, on other things. And so uh, some discussions are how can we broaden um, hack fests and events to not just what we've been doing, but what other people are doing. And can we have outreach to, um, you know, other places that there's really active Inkscape users? How can we, you know, use Inkscape to, to help those communities? Um, we also talked about hack fest next year. Uh, so one idea that we're floating is having two hack fests. We have this year we're having two, sort of, like this is the main one, and then also another one associated with LGM, the, the mini Hackfest. And then next year we're thinking about doing the same thing, but inverting it and having a, the main Hackfest maybe be somewhere in continental Europe, Germany maybe, if we can find somebody to, to help us organize. And, uh, uh, and then one in the US maybe associated with scale. Um, but they're just, their idea is up in the air. So if you have ideas, uh, you know, let us know. Um, you know, how can we get you here? So I think that covers everything we've ta talked about. Can you guys think of anything else? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some there's some other website stuff about uh, reorganizing uh, for the community, um, but the, it's still very early days. Uh, trying to work out wh what what pages need condensing and so so forth. So we're just going to have to work further uh, to make sure that we are delivering content to our contributors uh, and uh, the people that want to learn about Inkscape correctly. So we got one more day. And so tomorrow, um, we'll probably talk about funding, try to wrap up some of these ideas. We're also gonna try to do some documentation, to some code documentation to explain what things are in the code base. Uh, we, we spent some time today doing some archeology, span I guess, yeah. trying to understand jargon and stuff. And um, so we wanna try to use our time here to collectively record some of this stuff so it's clear to other people what our code base does. So thank you, and uh, draw freely. This is a bonus feature. Apparently variable fonts are working. Yeah, sorry. So here we have some text with variable font. Uh, I have weight and width, and I can change their values and see it be changing on canvas. So, changing the width. For some reason, I cannot drag it. I don't know why. But by clicking here, I can get different values. Can you do it once? Uh, uh, this, this font only has two axes, okay. weight and width. So, I can change width this way. Yeah. And weight. And all gets updated uh, as a style, uh, font variation settings um, attribute with the two axes, the axis name and the value, the axis name and the value. 
Uh, this is still just work in progress, but it's the first time it works. So it's pretty good. Yay. Congratulations. Good timing. Thank you. And thanks, Tav, because <laughs> without uh, Tav's work, it wouldn't have worked as, as well. So we did it together. <laughs>